We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, when a person looks around at the state of the ummah today, specifically as it relates to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, our brothers and sisters in Gaza, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their suffering and grant them victory. Allahumma ameen. ameen. And when a person looks at the difficulties around the ummah, and the seemingly pathetic state that we are in where we feel like we have been granted circumstances that are beyond us. Leaders that we are either deserving of or not deserving of. But a situation in which a person who is introspective will come back and ask themselves, am I responsible? Are these leaders, are these circumstances, are these difficulties merely an extension or reflection of the state of our ummah? Or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing us? Is what is happening to our brothers and sisters related to my day to day? Or is it completely disconnected? Is the complaint that I have about those who I feel like should be doing more, but are not doing more, who have leadership within our ummah, are those complaints really just extensions of my own disobedience? Are they reflections of me? Or are they a test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put upon us? And it comes back to an ayah from which we have the general rule in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin. That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the condition of a people until they change the conditions of themselves. But what is within our power? And subhanAllah, when you look at the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard, you will notice that whether the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about the leadership of this ummah or he's talking about the circumstances of the people, it's never entirely linear. Meaning it is not like we have righteous leadership that parallels righteous people, that parallels righteous circumstances all the times. In many of those situations, there's a disruption that happens along the way. And in every single one of those situations, there is a lesson that all of us can take. There's a famous statement that many people quote as a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it is not a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many of you have heard it, many of you have maybe repeated it. Kama takunu alaykum. As you are, will be placed upon you. But this statement, which is a wisdom that has been passed on between many generations, is not completely true to every single circumstance. Meaning it is not always the case كَمَا تَكُونُ يُوَلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ How you are will be placed upon you. Partially, there is some wisdom and some value and benefit to that statement for us to look back at ourselves. But it's not always the case. For example, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي The best of my generation or the best of my ummah خَيْرُ أُمَّتِي وَخَيْرُ nas The best of people is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ And then those that come after them, and then those that come after them, who we group as one and we call as salaf the pious predecessors. They are the best of all people, the first three generations of Islam. And after those generations, there's a general decline that happens in terms of righteousness. لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكل وعد الله الحسن. And even in Islam, those that came first before the conquest are not like those that came after. But everyone has their promise from Allah. So generally, every generation declines in righteousness, but there are always these bright, bright spots. في كل قرن من أمتي سابقون. In every generation of my ummah. There are these bright spots, there are forerunners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. 
But if you think about general righteousness, it is the Sahaba, and then the Tabi'een, and then the Taba' Tabi'een, those first three generations of Islam. But still with that, as the Imam Qutaybah rahimahullah points out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the likes of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah with al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, a brutal tyrant. And some people asked Hassan al-Basri, who's looked at as the greatest of the second generation of Islam. And if this is the second greatest generation that ever walked the face of the earth, how is it that we have this tyrant that's been placed upon us? Then his response would be to look into the social ills that we have allowed to permeate amongst ourselves and to increase in our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because whether this is a tyrant that has been placed upon us due to something that we have done or due to something that Allah wants to bring out of us, the end result is the same, the output is the same, a turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a holistic seeking of islah, of rectification of the self and of society and leaving the rest of the qadr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes when we talk about our leaders, they are a reflection of us or we are a reflection of them. Sometimes the change comes from top down. Sometimes it comes from bottom up. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah said a very famous statement. Qala sanfani min al-nas. There are two groups of people. Ida saluha saluhat al-ummah. If these two groups of people are righteous, then the ummah will be rectified. Wa ida fasada fasadat al-ummah. And if they become corrupt, then the ummah will become corrupted as well. Al-muluk wal-ulama. The rulers and the scholars. So there's top-down change. And indeed, if you have righteous leaders, they can in fact change the culture of the people. They can instill a rectification in the people that might have been missing. Salahuddin al-Ayyubi rahimahullah, who we always quote and we always wish for, another version of him, another manifestation of him in our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring about many revivers amongst us. Allahumma ameen. Salahuddin had to revive consciousness in the ummah. It's not that he was handed a righteous ummah. He had to revive himself and he had to revive his ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about great change on his hands. And before him, Nur al-Din rahimahullah, who was his mentor as well. So Islah came from top down. When you look at the history of Islam, the early days of the Muslims, there is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, who assumes leadership of this ummah at the age of 38 years old. And like his grandfather, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, resuscitates and breathes justice into an ummah that has been plagued with oppression. If you were to look at the line from Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Al Hassan and go all the way down to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, there isn't a direct correlation to the ummah's behavior. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed this ummah with a reviver that came years later from Khulafa al Rashidin to where he was included amongst them even though he was not immediately after them. As Imam al Shafi rahimahullah said, he is like Rajab, the Muharram month, the sacred month of Rajab, to the rest of Al Ashur al Haram, to the rest of the sacred months which are three together. Rajab is separated in the year but it is included amongst them. Likewise, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is separated from them in terms of his years, but he is included amongst them. So sometimes Allah blesses an ummah that is sleeping with righteousness at the top, that infuses righteousness through society, that seeks to wake it up, revive its consciousness, and brings about beauty throughout. That happens sometimes. But sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes, indeed, kama takunu, yuwala alaykum as you are, will be placed upon you. Sometimes the culture of the people shapes what is at the top and shapes their circumstances. And subhanAllah, there's a, a famous narration of uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he was asked, you know, how come you're not like Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma in terms of raising the people? And he said, Abu Bakr and Umar had men like me, I have men like you. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan rahimahullah was asked something very sim similar. And he joined the people, he brought the people together. Jama'an nas, wa qala lahum, 
إِنَّكُمْ تُرِيدُونَ مِنَّا أَنْ نَكُونَ مِثْلَ أَبِي بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرٍ He said, I'm the Khalifa, and he gathered the people and he said, you want from us to be like Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. He says, كُونُوا أَنْتُمْ مِثْلَ رِجَالِ أَبِي بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرٍ But you should be like the men of Abu Bakr and Umar. And then you will see the change that you're seeking. So it goes both ways. It's not just from top bottom, it's also bottom up. Culture produces certain leaders. Mentorship produces leaders. Communities like this one, Masajid, here in Ireland or in the United States or wherever it is, produce the next generations of Salah al-Din. Produce the righteous leaders that then take the mantle and they lead this ummah to where it needs to go. But we can't simply keep waiting for someone to come up there. The Salah al-Din syndrome or the Mahdi syndrome. Everything will be okay when he comes. And we don't look inside ourselves. إِذَا أَرَدْتَ صَلَاحَ الدِّينَ If you want to be Salah al-Din, فَكُونْ رَجُلٍ أَمِينَ Then be a righteous, trustworthy person in your own daily dealings. Don't be a person that deals in cheating and then complains about the leaders of the Ummah. Because Allah knows that many of those that complain about the leaders of the Muslims would be just as corrupt as them if they were in that situation. Because sometimes they reflect the culture. If you look at the ahadith of the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith of Abu Hurairah anhu, where the Prophet وسلم, was speaking and a man came, a Bedouin came and said, Mata sa'ah, when is the hour? And the Prophet وسلم, did not answer him immediately. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, Aina sa'idu an sa'ah, where is the one who asked me about the hour? And when he came forth, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned, Ida duyi'at al amana when trust is lost, then wait for the day of judgment to come, wait for the hour to come. And the Bedouin asked the right question. How does it get lost? How does trust become lost amongst the people? The Prophet gives a component of this that seems to be outside of our circumstances and one that seems to be a conscious choice. The Prophet says in one narration of this, very simple. When the affair of the Muslims is given to those who are undeserving, when political leadership goes to corrupt people, and they transform righteousness into wickedness. That's something that is usually beyond our control. Very few times in history do people actually get to choose their leaders. And even in the illusion of democracies, usually there is a, a component of compulsion that forces your leaders upon you. Very few times in history do people actually consciously choose their leaders. So when it goes to people that are undeserving, when it goes to people that lose the amana of the Muslims, that lose the amana of the believers, but there's a conscious part. The Prophet said, اتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤُوسًا جُهَالًا فَسُئِلُوا فَأَفْتَوْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ فَضَلُّوا the Prophet ﷺ said, when people take leaders amongst themselves that are fools and they are asked and they respond without knowledge, they are astray and they lead astray. You know how we take this for ourselves, dear brothers and sisters? You don't get to choose your political leaders, but you do get to choose your role models. You might not get to choose who governs over you, but you do choose your trendsetters. You do choose who you follow. You do choose who you consume. You do choose your leaders in every other sense of the word. And if the culture is producing the most rotten of leaders, if our young people are looking up to the worst of people, then the problem is not in who is being placed upon us. The problem is who we are placing upon ourselves. There's a conscious part of this too. And so yes, our leaders are a reflection of us. Yes, those that come above us are a reflection of us. But also, dear brothers and sisters, there's the culture of justice. So do we choose our leaders? In some ways, yes. Do we choose our circumstances? In some ways, yes. In one narration, the Prophet said, are you given support or victory except by how you treat your most vulnerable? Are you given support and victory from Allah except by how you treat those who need help amongst you? Look at yourself. How are you governing? How are you carrying out your affairs as a community? And Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah, 
He said in terms of the ahwal of the Muslims, in terms of the circumstances of the Muslims. He said, if you look at the narrations of Asbab and Nusra, the reasons for victory, and you compare those to Asbab al Hazima, the reasons for defeat, you will find that every hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he mentions a sabab, a reason for victory, there's the opposite of a reason for corruption and humiliation, and vice versa. It's actually a powerful way to read the Quran and a powerful way to read the Sunnah. If Allah tells you that something bears righteousness in your life, then the opposite naturally bears wickedness. And if Allah tells you that something bears wickedness in your life, then the opposite obviously bears righteousness. So for example, where the Prophet ﷺ said, هَلْ تُرْزَقُونَ وَتُنْصَرُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ Are you given victory or support except by how you treat your most vulnerable? There's also the narration of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُقَدِّسُ أُمَّةً لَا يُؤْخَذُ لِلْضَعِيفِ فِيهِمْ حَقُّهُ Allah will not honor an ummah that does not take justice for the weak amongst them. It's one of the reasons for hazima, one of the reasons for defeat and humiliation. Allah will not honor an ummah that does not stand up for the oppressed amongst them, that does not stand up for the weak amongst them. And so you want nasr? Are you involved in a nusra? You want Allah to give you victory in your circumstance? Are you a reason for someone else's victory? You want Allah to honor you? Do you honor the weak amongst you? Do you honor the oppressed amongst you? كَلَّا بَلَّا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمِ Right? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this about the disbelievers? You want to be honored, but you don't honor the orphan amongst you. You want Allah to honor you, but do you honor those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in your care? And so our leaders are a product of us. Our circumstances are a product of us in many ways. But with all of that being said, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً We test you with evil and we test you with good. Sometimes, subhanAllah, the most righteous people are tested with the most evil of tyrants. And sometimes the most wicked of people are given the most comfortable circumstances. It goes back to what is emanating from you. What is your contribution to this environment? What are you putting back into it? Look at these two ayat, subhanAllah, and how they speak to two different realities. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, if the people of the town would have only believed and been God conscious, they would have feared Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and honored the covenant. Allah would have opened the blessings of the skies, the heavens, and the earth for them. But instead they denied. And so they were taken as a result of that which they used to do. But Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala also says, "Falamma nasu ma dhukiru bihi." In the very next surah, when they forgot between Al-An'am wal araf when they forgot the reminders that were sent to them, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We open for them all the doors of good. حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا Until they found joy in that which was given to them, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِيسُونَ We suddenly snatched them and they found themselves in despair. So Allah talks about punishing a people with obvious punishment. And Allah also talks about punishing a people by giving them exactly what they want. نَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً That Allah Azza wa utilizes both of these upon a wicked people to wake them up or to punish them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also utilizes for the believers that which brings out the best potential of their righteousness for their time. That produces the best benefit for them in regards to their circumstances. But the rule still remains. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا إِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرُكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ The verses still connect very clearly righteousness with goodness in this life 
in the next, reflected in what is above us, reflected in what is around us, reflected in what is beneath us. Righteousness produces good. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you when you are righteous, then it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to elevate you. And so when you look at the people of Gaza, when you look at the people that are struggling in our ummah the way that they are struggling, it may be that they are the negligence or it may be that they are the sin of your negligence, but at the same time, a maqam, a station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to bring them through. It could be both of those things. They could be our sin and their own elevation. All of those things are possibilities where we still look inside and we say, are our leaders, are our circumstances due to anything that I am doing? You see, dear brothers and sisters, in conclusion, many times we talk about our dua and our sadaqah, a solidarity for the wronged of this ummah. But when you read a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he mentions al-Muslimun, كَرَجُلٍ wahid أَوْ كَجَسَدٍ wahid كَالْجَسَدٍ wahid If the people, the Muslims, are like one man or one body, it's one thing to say that I feel the pain of the other parts of the body. It's another thing to say that I will not cause pain to the rest of the body. If I'm the hand of the ummah, I will not stab the rest of the ummah in the back or in the front. I will not be the weak link. When he says, alayhi salatu wassalam, al-mu'minu lil-mu'mini kal-bunyan, yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. That the believer to the believer is like a structure. He reinforces the rest of the building. Then I will make sure that I am holding up my part and I am not an empty slot in the building. I'm not the missing brick in the building. That actually causes harm to the ummah. So when you look at what is happening in the ummah, do not ask, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing these people with their leaders? Is Allah punishing them with their circumstances? Ask yourself, is anything that I am doing producing that which causes harm to me or to my ummah? Is anything that I am doing producing the miserable circumstances that we find ourselves in? And it may be that those same sins that are a cause for your misery or my misery, may Allah protect us in this life or the next, could also be a cause for the elevation of another part of the ummah. Because even if they feel the pain of our negligence, they will still taste the reward of their Lord, who is the most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in righteousness and in victory. May Allah increase us in that which brings about goodness in this life and the next, and raise us with our brothers and sisters to the highest level, the highest rank, so that we can be alongside our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fulfill those of a'la. Allahumma ameen, aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa nisa'ala al-muslimin, fa astaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Allahumma khfir al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat, wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat, al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat. Innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma khfir lana wa arhamna, wa afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam takhfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma innaka afuun kareemu tuhibu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. اللهم اغفر لي والدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء دين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخوانا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة